Well, hello. Love and like here. We are going to get started with some little tutorial on creating your own custom customized entities using um, resource in resource packs for Minecraft. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me give you a quick background on what we're going to do here today. And while I'm talking, maybe a couple of people will roll into the room here. So um, basically what we're going to be doing is taking a real quick pace of um, getting a vanilla resource pack and then going in, customizing, uh, kind of reading the way uh, models are customized or the way they're created. We're going to go ahead and customize some of them. Uh, we're going to customize the skin and some of the mo motion, things like that. So you can get a feel for at least getting started with what it takes to get your own custom custom resource pack created. So uh, we're gonna kind of go through that. And I've got the uh, chat here. Um, I'm gonna say, hey, what's up guys? All right, so we're just getting, just getting rolling here. I know a lot of you are chomping at the bit for a resource pack tutorial and you know the state of the of the tool set is not quite great so I'm going to show you how to understand what it looks like and um, yeah it has been a while I'm gonna but I'm going to show you uh, basically how to decipher what it is and how to customize it and hopefully with some of your own ingenuity you'll be off to creating some cool stuff so I'll be peeking over at the chat every once in a while uh, so this is going to go super quick, so I'll post it, the post the recording so you can go back to it. And I'm going to cut some corners and, um, you know, just go ahead and, and get you through the process. So hopefully you can, uh, you can pick up the tips along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is go get the resource pack. So you should know how to do that. Minecraft.net. Real simple, you can go over here to the add-ons and then scroll down to the resource pack. This is a resource pack, not a behavior pack that we're gonna be customizing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, let's see. So we've got that, uh, that download here. Let me go ahead and just hold on one second. Let's get over here. Get the downloads. We're going to get that resource pack and we're going to drop it on the desktop. So the vanilla resource pack is right here. Okay. So we'll close that up. Close that. So uh, let's see here. Getting back to my chat. Uh, can I run an add-on for Windows 10 Edition, please? Yeah, the uh, you should check the make sure you check the playlist of the behavior pack tutorials. That's still pretty relevant. Um, it, it, it's a, definitely a good starter. So um, make sure you go ahead and check those out. So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to uh, start our add-on pack here. I'm going to extract all and there's a ton of files in this. So it's going to be extracting those files. Look at that, 3,722. So creating your own custom pack is pretty significant piece of work, but customizing entities is really cool for uh, mini games and creating your own custom adventure maps, things like that. So you can really kind of make the game your own if you combine the resource pack and the um, behavior pack together. So let me go ahead and get to my desktop folder. Can you believe it? I'm, I'm in dual screen mode, so I'm kind of bouncing back and forth, but I've had uh, a desktop with one screen for such a long time interesting uh, change for me. It's kind of sad. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move this baby over here. 
Okay, so here's our resource pack. Let's go ahead and get into that guy and have a look at it. So first of all, kind of navigating your resource pack, you're going to see here, um, obviously the, the manifest.json, we, we're going to need to customize that, but you see we've got models. So if I go in there, we have our mobs.json file. We're going to need that. Sounds, we're not going to use. I'm going to go ahead and delete that right now. Text, that's the actual text. We're going to go ahead and delete that. We're not working on that today. So now, if you're if you're creating your own custom resource pack and you, whatever you're whatever you're customizing, you're going to want to keep those things. Um, I have some get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of the UI elements as well. We're not customizing those. And then textures, you really should only have in your resource pack and your behavior pack the things that you've created that are different from vanilla. So in this case, I'm going to leave this kind of the way it is right now. And then um, actually, why don't we go ahead and get rid of everything except I think we're really going to need the entity folder pretty much. So we'll keep the models one just in case there's anything in there that we might need to reference for discussion's sake. But getting rid of things that are part of vanilla because all of those are they're the default pack that's brought in. You don't need to have a copy of that as well. As a matter of fact, that's probably a bad idea. So you can see all the different skins basically for all your different entities. That's good. So we have our models being defined in the mobs.json file, which is the, the structure of the blocks that make up the entity. And then what it looks like is the textures in the entity folder and the textures. So those are the things we're going to be referencing. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is now go and open my manifest JSON file. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code. I, I figured why not use it to Microsoft product. Let's go ahead and, and use that. And um, I found a plugin for UUIDs in Visual Studio Code. So it's really, uh, really simple. You could also go to, uh, to websites to generate UUIDs and put them in here. But I'm gonna go ahead and say, other like test uh, resource. I'll spell eventually here. Um, so just let me know if anything goes wrong with volume or if anything gets it gets quirky, put it in the chat. I'm not keeping a, a full-time look at it, but I'll poke over there every once in a while and check it out. Um, okay, so first of all, you definitely have to change these. You don't want to use the defaults. That would be bad. So I'm going to bring up the command palette. I've got UUID. And you can see that the UUID has changed. So that's a universally unique ID that is changed. And we're going to do that again here. All right. So you see both of those changed when I uh, ran that program. So we're going to go ahead and save this now. So we have kind of we have created the existence of our custom resource pack by just doing those those basic customizations. Hopefully we're not going to have to mess around with that anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And so now what we're going to do is go ahead and look at the mobs.json file. So let's go back over that bad boy and open it up and go over here. Okay, so this is the definition. You see where it says geometry chicken. And you can look over here on the right-hand side. You see this, the way this outline works. These are all entity definitions. So it's defining the bones. So here's the important part of the hierarchy here is the obviously the entity itself. And then you have the bones. And then inside the bones, you have the cubes, which are the blocks that make up those bones. So those uh, in that bone, like the head, the head has a motion, uh, you know, has some type of movement or some sort of definition to it. And the cubes can, uh, you can have one or more cubes that make up that specific bone. Okay, it doesn't have to be just one bone. So let me just, um, okay, cool. So um, that's the basic thing here. So if you look at the head, let's look at some of the important points here. So you have um, a pivot point. So obviously that would be the point that would be anchored if this thing was going to move in any, on any of the axis, this would be the point where it was anchored. So 
and that's relative. You're going to see how that's relative to uh, to the model. Uh, when I'll, I'll bring it up in a visual editor so you can see that better. Uh, and then there's a default rotation. Uh, most of the time it's zero, but that it comes in handy when you're working with bones that move. And if you need your animation to move on a different orientation, you can you can rotate it. So like you know if your legs are moving front to back, and you want them to move side to side, for instance, you can you can set the rotation of the legs so that um, when they animate, they'll animate sideways instead of front to back. So that's that's where uh, rotation comes in handy. And then the cubes, the actual elements that make up the uh, that particular bone. So you have an origin, which would be a, a starting point, right? You have your x, y, and z axis, and then you have your size from that origin, um, x, y, and z as well. And then the UV is the the starting point of the uh, you know the x and y coordinates for in pixels in the uh, the skin that's being used. And so it, it'll map, uh, it'll wrap that cube with the texture from that point in the texture file, okay? And so you can see the beak, just kind of, you know, looking at the beak on a chicken, it's uh, it's kind of wide and not too tall, and it's a little bit longer, right? So you can see here the size is um, four, so that's probably how how long it is. And then you have the Y, which is, uh, is always the up and down, so that's the height of it, and then you have the width of it over here with the two, right? And then the comb, that's that's below the beak. You can check that out, a little cube, basically, right? And then we have the body and the legs, right? So you see how these are all named. These are all bones. Mm -hmm. They have names, and they contain cubes. And this is pretty simple because there's only one cube per bone. And then there's the wings, right? The wings are kind of flat, so side to side, you know, they're one block uh, thick, basically, and they're four blocks. I'm saying blocks, but really it's kind of like pixels or, you know, elements of, it, uh, of, the, of the entity um, coordinates. And then there's the length, right? So, and you can see the index gets picked up from a different location on that wing, but the wings are picked up from the same UV location or the same texture location here. So anyway, that's the um, that's the chicken. That's kind of explaining the different elements. Um, you know, uh, the legs move on the chicken, and also the wings flap, and the head and the head rotates as well. So those are all different uh, things we would keep in mind if we we're going to be customizing this for our own purposes. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Take a look here. Um, so let's do some let's do some work on this. Let's let's come up with something. So one of the things I'm going to do before we start to customize that, I want to show you a tool. One of the tools that I've been using lately is called Blockbench. It's a free download. Um, I can put the link in the description, or you could search it up. Um, but basically, it's a pretty useful it's a pretty useful tool. And it's, I think it's pretty easy to use. So I like how intuitive it is. I don't have a ton of time to learn about all this stuff, uh, all, everything in the world. So I've been um, uh, finding this one pretty easy to learn. So one of the things I've done is is uh, found a plugin. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of different available uh, plugins for it that you can install. They're pretty helpful. And um, this one does. Uh, basically creates bedrock entities for you. So if I were to grab the chicken and um, there we go, there's our chicken. And so now you can see kind of how that guy goes. So it looks like the beak is actually wider than it is longer. And, uh, so I had that wrong there. Uh, let, let's see here, what else do we have? You can see the, um, the comb. Being two by two is kind of set back in the face there. But one of the interesting things is this this is kind of like our zero point here. Um, and we've got the center of the entity based on the zero point. That's why it's drawn kind of off center like that. So in our uh, looking at things, we're going to go ahead and I can click on the different cubes here. 
And so if we click on this piece right here, you could see it's labeled beak and it's the beak cube. So that's pretty helpful that um, this, uh, the plugin that uh, Genium made is nice because it takes the entity definition and, and just breaks it out into the model. Um, you know, creating your own models for Minecraft is not building them from scratch. It's basically customizing ones that exist already. And so it's pretty cool when you can have a start from here and you could start to go ahead and, and customize the different, uh, the different blocks and entities. And that you don't, the texturing is not quite that accurate right now. So that's something you would still probably want to do manually. Um, I could, I'm not going to go into too much detail on there, but I'm going to show you how that works. So, so a cool thing about this tool, you click on it, you can move things by just grabbing the axis that you want to move it on. And if you double click, it allows you to resize it. Right. And then if you, if you left click on the anywhere, that's not an ob that's not an object you can move it around. Scroll wheel zooms in and out. And the right click slides the uh, slides the entire canvas so you can uh, zoom in better, you know. So if you're zooming in like this, you can do a right click drag to get a better view. Okay, so that's a quick overview on how that tool works. And so one of the interesting things here, uh, let's talk about let's look at the wing. That's a good one. You see this little um, this little plus here, that's the pivot point. So if we look at the rotation, it's rotating on the x-axis based on that anchor point. So you could see that's what would happen if it was animating on the x-axis. If it was animating on the y-axis, it would look like that. And if it was animating on the z-axis, which is the way the default entity works, right? So the chicken's flying like this. So now you know that this bone is programmed to move like this when like the chicken's flying. And that's kind of a built-in behavior. And if you want to work with that, then you can go ahead and kind of hijack that, that functionality. So let's go ahead and um, let's do something simple on this one. I was going to make a double-headed chicken, but there's three. There's the head, the beak, and the comb that all make up um, the different pieces. Why don't we just customize this particular one by making the wings longer? So if I were to go one, two, three, four, five, six, let's, let's say their wings are, are six longer. I'm not going to make the changes in here, even though you can export a... Um, a bedrock entity. I'm just kind of using this so I can get my numbers and we'll in interpret that into the code. So let's go over to the code here and we're going to look at the wings. Okay and now let's let's have a look at this and make sure we're going to do this right. Our pivot point is already set and then we have our origin, right, our x, y, and z. So you could see here the origin is seven and then the height is four let's see here so that's what it has as the as the origin let's make so let's make the origin one the y of it make it one and then we'll make the height what did we say six more so ten am i doing that right i'm not going to know if i'm doing that right if you if you if you think i'm doing it wrong go ahead and throw it in the chat and maybe i'll notice it but that's the beauty of this is the, the trial and error. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I am ex extending the size of the wing and I'm also extending kind of where it starts. And so hopefully it'll line up back kind of where the wing belongs. And um, one thing that's going to be screwed up is our texture because we are no longer um, scaled properly for the texture. So I'll show you how that works as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we're going to, well, I'm going to break a couple rules here, uh, being hasty. So what we're going to do with, um, I think I can get rid of that sound and the blocks. And just keep the manifest and textures. I want to keep some of the textures here so that we can mess around with them later. Which is kind of a no-no, right? Because we don't, we don't want to be doing that. So don't do that. But I'm, what I'm going to do is go ahead and make this a behavior, an add-on, basically. 
I'm selecting these, notice how I'm not going here and selecting the folder. I'm going into the folder and I'm selecting the files in that folder. And I'm going to right click and say send to compressed zip folder. And I'm going to call that uh, clever like resource. And then I'm, I'm not going to make it a zip. If you're not seeing the, um, the file extension, make sure you go to view and then change the file extensions to be to be viewable. Um, and I, I got a little too excited there. I clicked before I was done. So .mc pack creates the behavior pack. Okay. Now this gets the Minecraft icon. If I were to double click on that, we have Minecraft coming up and. Started importing. Gosh, I hope I did it right. And then it says successful. That's cool. So I'm going to say play. And then I'm going to create new. Create a new world. And then I'm going to say uh, live stream test. And then I'm going to go to my resource pack. There's my custom resource pack. Add that. And I am going to Go back to the game settings. We'll set it to creative. Yeah. And leave the difficulty the way it is. Set it to flat. And turn on cheats. Let me get out of here. Yeah, cheats are active. Okay, cool. Uh, so go ahead and create that. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a chicken. Gosh, I hope I did this right. I kind of went off my uh, original plan. I hate doing the same thing every time. Right, boy. Oh, check your bed skills out. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I like the sleeves too, bro. Looking good. Hey, let's um, let's go up. Let's go up here. Let's see how you fly. All right. Um, there we go. Oh man, is that a, is that an eagle? What is that? It's a shame he's falling. He's got some good. You got some good lift on those bad boys. Oh man! All right. So you see how it followed. <laughs> it's funny. All right. Sorry, I get get a kick out of this stuff. All right. So let's see here. We've got um, we got that created. So you see how how we did that. We've we've created our custom resource pack. Uh, that's really like the real basic immediate uh, tutorial on that. So if you if you're ready to go, you can just bust out and start making your own right now. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do something a little more complicated now, and I'm gonna kind of cheat on that one because we're going to um, now. What happens was this world that got created. I'm gonna exit out of it. This world that got created is now in our Minecraft uh, world folder. So if you haven't created a quick access link to your, um, to your Minecraft folder, you need to do that. There's a, a video in my uh, behavior pack tutorial on how to do that. Uh, so you want to go into the Minecraft worlds folder and you can see here we have a, um, this looks like it, right? 223, yeah. So I'm going to go into this world and you're going to see now the resource pack that we created is in here. And so I'm going to cheat and I'm going to tweak it while it's in here. And so why, why would you, why is that a bad idea? It's a bad idea because now my original behavior, my original resource pack is not changing when I change stuff in this world. So I, I like to do this for quick experimentation and testing and things like that. And then you're, you know, you would have to take the changes that you make that you liked, have to bring them out of here, or you'd have to generate a new, uh, a new resource pack from it. And then you have to worry about versioning problems and things like that. So it's it's a good idea to um, to kind of build your own resource pack from scratch. But I like to do this because it's faster and it's going to make life easier. Anyway, uh, so if you run into problems doing it this way, that, that's that's the warning. Okay. So let's go ahead and now go back. In. Now we're going to have to close out our. Remember we had the mobs JSON open. Now this is the mobs JSON for our, our resource pack, not the one that's in our world. So I've got to make sure to close that. If you edit that and then look for changes, you're going to get really frustrated. So make sure not to do that. Um, like we're 
looking at it from scratch here. I'm going to go into models. Now I'm opening the mobs JSON that's in my world. So that's good. And I'm going to show you a different thing. So let's go back actually into the world. And um, I want to show you the ghast. My friend the ghast. He's a little bit of a crybaby, but you know, it's okay. Hello. All right. So obviously just a big cube, but you've got all these like the tentacles and there are some of them are different lengths. Notice that front ones are a little shorter, but if you look at their motion, they don't move together. Like none of them move together. They're all kind of, uh, they're just, Regulated in a way that is, makes them interesting. So I thought, well, that'd be cool to kind of show some of the animation. So each each tentacle has its own movement planned, but we could customize its position. So let's go ahead and and quit that, and let's look at the ghast and let's create something cool by customizing that. Now. You're not at a point with Minecraft where you can just create your own brand new entity from scratch and program everything. We're kind of hijacking existing entities and, um, you know, taking their motion and their structure, you know, their bone structure, and we're customizing it. So, you know, at some point you're going to be able to create everything from scratch, but it's not there yet. So we have to customize what it is. So we have all these tentacles. So it starts at zero and goes to eight. So there's nine tentacles. And um, the size here is 16. So it's 16 by 16. So let's go ahead and, and um, let's mess around with this. I'm going to, uh, instead of having these long legs that come out of the bottom of it, I'm going to make short blocks that stretch out from behind it like a tail. And since they move, since they alternate their movement, um, if I set the pivot point properly, it could get kind of a, a tail movement happening from this creature that we're going to turn the gas into. So it's going to be, this is the hard part, right? So you can kind of, um, you know, you could always go to a modeler and visualize it first. So that makes it easier to, um, and get your head around what, what you're doing here. So if we go to, um, let's just do a new, discard that, and um, bring in a new ghast and see how that works. I haven't done the ghast in here before. Sorry about that checkbox, okay. Thought I clicked it, let's go, ghast. There he is, our baby. Okay, so look at that. So the zero is kind of the bottom of the cube. And then again, that center point, right, is set right there. See how the legs are offset? If I select one of them, you could again see the axis of rotation is at work there. And so what I'm thinking of doing is kind of taking these guys and putting them behind like, let's see if I grab this, double click and grab this guy, move him out, and double click here, shrink him down, right? And I'll just kind of stack these guys one after the other behind each other, coming back out of the back of the ghast. Which I believe it would be over this way here, but we'll just go ahead and, and that oh okay so before i do that this is our our rotation point here right so this is interesting to watch so oh, let me rotate the canvas here so you see when our pivot point is far away you've got this pendulum action right now if the if the pivot point ends up being much closer down to uh down to this point then that uh that cube would just rotate okay so that's the, um, that's the important piece there, where the pivot point is located matters. So we'll just 
pay attention to that and go check this guy out. I'm sorry, I'm so long-winded on this, but this is, uh, this is important to figure out. So I'm just going to change the sizes to um, make them a little smaller. So I'll do like, that's not small. Okay, I'll make them like seven each, right? And the origin is minus, remember it was it was 16, so the origin was, um, well, let's make this eight. All right, come on, baby. So the origin was minus eight uh, X and minus eight Z, and uh, it was zero on the Y, that's why it was flat on that grid. And since I'm making the size eight, to keep it centered, I only have to offset it because eight was half of 16, so four is half of eight. So it's still centered where it needs to be, right? And now the pivot point, we have uh, the, the pivot point for the tentacles. We have here um, vertically at the one axis, and I think what I'm going to do is make it zero and zero here. And I guess for the sake of consistency, we'll do 0, 0.0. Okay, so I've got the pivot point kind of like in the, the center of the body. That's where the center of the body is at the zero, zero. And then, well, it's not that this... Uh, what would the center be? Since it's eight high, this would actually be four. Okay. So that's more like the center of the body is right there for the pivot point. And let's anchor that for all of them. So I'm going to copy this line. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for each one. And I hope I'm doing this right. Looks like I have to uh, debug this on the live stream. But, you know, we'll do it. We'll do whatever it takes. Because not everything's perfect. But this stuff is actually not that hard and it's kind of fun. So, uh, okay, so I have set the pivot points for all of them, and but we still have the tentacles. They're all long and hanging from the bottom. So now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to set the size. I want all of them to be cubes. And notice how I'm not trying to bite off too many things at once. I'm, I'm taking one task and then following it through beginning to end instead of trying to change everything each tentacle, I'm taking one piece and editing it so I don't get confused. So I'm changing all the sizes. Notice how these guys have different sizes, right? We noticed that before, they all weren't the same length. Hopefully, get it over here. Okay, so all of the tentacles are now cubed, so that's good. And I'm getting a phone call on my Google Hangouts. Apologize. Hold on one sec. Got to set a little do not disturb. Just tweaking that. Oh, it looks like that's done. All right, are we still are still with me here? Okay. All right, let's go. Um, so now we are uh, we're on our way to customizing the gas to be like some totally new creature. And we're putting in a little time and effort to, to figuring this out. We're breaking each piece down. Um, so we're going to take the tentacles and stack them all, be one behind the other, behind the gas. So now let's go ahead and look at the first one here. Now the origin is something that we have to work on. So the uh, origin is going to be... Now remember, it was it was four uh, 
uh, it was an eight. Uh, it was an eight block or eight coordinate cube, but centered at zero. So that means four would be the the one end of it, and then the height of it would be four. And this again is the location, um, and the block is two. So actually, we should do. Um, we should do, no, that, that's good, yeah. Um, and let's see here. This guy would be, let's make him four as well. All right, so the origin on this guy would be four, 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 and he takes up two blocks. So we're going to make this guy, hey, let's do four, zero. I don't think I have to do the point zero, but you know, let's keep it consistent. Sorry, that's probably just irritating. All right, so we have uh, here, gosh, I know you're anxious to see what this is going to look like. I just have to make sure that, okay, I am. Okay, so, and now this one, we want to make it six, right? So it pushes to, it's uh, Z position is pushed two back. And hopefully I have that correct. All right, I'm going to copy this. Copy and the origin, paste that, and then change this one to eight. Go to this origin and change it to ten. Then go to this origin, change it to twelve. So thanks for joining me. All you guys that are here live and who's ever watching the recording here, appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like if you are learning some stuff. Subscribe to the channel. I got tons of stuff on my wish list. It's just time, time, time. But um, always good hearing your feedback and getting that encouragement. So, um, definitely happy to answer questions when I can as well. So I'm just go ahead and extending all of these. Pushing out that Z axis two axis two blocks each time. All right, I am going to save this. Now keep in mind the UV index, the the, the UV which is the skin changes because we just changed the size on this. And so now we have uh, we have kind of an issue potentially with the skin on this guy. So one of the things I want to do, I guess, first, I, I saved it. I'm going to go back over to the world. This is the benefit of modifying the world because now something is going to happen to the gas if, we're, if we did it right. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it looks like it's a little crooked, but check that out. So it's leveraging the built-in motion of the gas, right? And because of the pivot point, it's more dramatic towards the end of the tail and less towards the beginning. So we're going to need to center that a little more. <laughs> and look how it's transparent at some spots. Um, that's because the skin is, you know, our, our UV mapping is not working right. So we're going to have to go ahead and fix the centering of this tail thing, and we're going to have to go and reskin it. So that's pretty cool. So I bet you're going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> you bet you're going to go ahead and uh, and pay more attention back to what we just did so you can see how the heck we did that totally cool thing. All right, so I'm going to go here and um, let's look at that. Let's look at that centering, the origin. Um, we had it at four. Oh, right. That was dumb. Uh, we should have put it at like, um, what should we put it at? Like minus one or zero. Let's let's just do it at zero for now. Um, but actually, let's, let's try minus one. Let's try minus one. All right. So minus one, minus one, minus one. Oh, geez. Did you see what I just did there? Where were you on that? All right changing the pivot point. Um, origin, minus one. Gosh, 
I pick something with eight different changes to make every time, and I'm going so slow. I have a new mouse that totally sucks. And I'm not using the keyboard. I'm using the mouse, which is totally lame. I'm sorry. Um, so, let's see, origin, minus one. Okay, let's just save that guy and have a look at it. Here, back to it. Let's see what we got. Try to be quiet, please. And let's see, what's it looking like? Okay, a little more centered. It's a little high, but that's looking much better. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and close out. I'm not going to mess with it any further. I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to quit out of there. One of the things we can do as well, Remember I was talking about rotation and things like that? So we could kind of set the rotation of the head to be a little different on this one. So like the, the body, let's, let's see what happens when we change this to 45. Just take that and then go back in. See how quick this is when you're altering it in the world? Just remember, you have to, you're gonna have to make a new pack. So now he looks like he's kind of, that would be his face facing down and he looked like he's checking everybody out. Uh, so that's kind of perfect actually. Um, how silly is this? Okay. So now it's time to mess with the, with the skin. So I, I'm a Photoshop user. Uh, <laughs> the flying sperm. I know. It's, it's, it's a tail. It's a tail. Uh, you know, it's the reproductive. <laughs> uh, this is, yeah, you guys are funny. Um, basically, we're, you know, if you're just joining us, we're, we're customizing the entities in Minecraft. And so... Uh, since you have to, you have to, you can't make custom entities, but you can customize existing ones. So what we did was we took the ghast and uh, we we kind of reconfigured it and apparently turned it into a uh, member of the reproductive family. Uh, keep keep it keep it clean here. All right, so let's go ahead and and get into the texture. So I'm going to go into Photoshop. Uh, any any paint program is fine. It's just you know, once you learn something, go with what you know. So uh, in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and remember we had our textures over here. Where are these guys? We're in the world. Again, not our pack that we had on our desktop, that I had on my desktop. I'm in the pack that's in the Minecraft folder. And if you don't know where that folder is, I have a video that explains that. I'll have to provide links to the... To, um, my behavior pack playlist um, in the in the comments so you can go check that out okay so in the entities we're looking for a ghast and here's the ghast folder and we have two different elements we have the ghast skin and then we have the ghast shooting so that's going to make that nasty red eye face um, let's just leave that alone for now and let's uh, open up the Cast here. Uh, so I am jumping in, zooming in on that bad boy. And see these checkerboards, right? Checkerboards mean that it's transparent. And we had um, set the um, we set the UV index in our resource pack here as zero zero. So zero zero is the top left corner. And the first coordinate is the X coordinate, which goes across. You can see each square here is basically a pixel, it's super zoomed in, 1200%. And then the second coordinate is the Y, which goes down. And the reason we're having like missing spots on our, our, um, our guest is because we have some transparency. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So I'm just gonna take a uh, gradient tool, throw something in here. There we go. So I just created a silly little gradient. I'm going to save that. And it saves as a PNG file. And now there is no transparency. So let's go back to the game and see what this bad boy looks like. It's going to look pretty stupid, but whatever, you know. At least you can see now. Oh, that's 
I don't know, that's pretty stylish, I'm thinking. All right, so now we have to, um, I should have really made a behavior pack that makes these guys not move around so much. But anyway, this is the face here. You can see how it's kind of gradient along the side. So let's, let's break these coordinates down on this guy. I'm gonna go out of here. Now you can see in most of the resource packs, let's go ahead and open up a different resource pack real quick. So um, actually we can open up the gas shooting. Right. Uh, so it's, this is, you know, they do, um, it's a 16 by 16 entity normally, right? So this first block here is actually discarded. It's not used for the, the head. It's actually, these, these are the tentacles kind of buried in there because the head doesn't use that. This is the top of the head. This is the face of the head. This is the, the right side of the face, left side of the face, and the back. And then this would be the bottom, right, where the tentacles come out. So, so in your cubes, this is the way the texture is pulled from the image. You have this six-sided cube. It, based on its coordinates, it will... Um, you know, pull the images, you know, the image from those coordinates. Okay, so let's kind of break that down here real quick. Um, let's make sure that our preferences are set to just set the ruler to pixels. Okay. Right, so it's set to pixels, and we made the gas eight pixels, right? So there's eight, and then there's 16, and then 24. Okay, just kind of building that out. We're going to go eight. Okay. So this is the skin area for our gas. And remember, the face kind of had that gradient across. And the face was what? Right here, was this, it was the bottom second block over. So that would be this block right here. So if I were to grab something completely stupid here, um, what kind of eyes is this guy going to have? He's going to have some green eyes. So I'll say OK. And I'm going to just drop some eyes on this bad boy. Interesting. Okay, and then we'll give him a little a little face. Oh, that's a big mouth. So something really stupid and simple. So we are going to save that and see if the face shows up correctly. There it is. <laughs> All right, so now you've got your custom entity, right? We leverage the existing bones. You can't really create new bones in the definition here. You know, so these, these named bones you want to leave there, but the cubes that they're made out of, you can move them wherever you want. You can set their pivot point, their rotation. Um, to however you want. Like for instance, if we wanted the tail to go side to side instead of up and down, that's where we would do the rotation. So we'd rotate it 90 degrees. We'd have to figure out which thing to rotate 90 degrees. But if we rotated them all 90 degrees, then they would they would they would go side to side instead of back and forth, instead of up and down. So that's uh, what the rotation would be useful for. In that scenario, and these 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 blocks, you can just get rid of them or make them transparent, or you can move them however you want, make them whatever size you want. You can add multiple bones to it. Like if we were to give the ghast a big, make it like a unicorn ghast. Okay, now I'm totally off script here. Um, if if you take a look at, just make sure we have. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now I'm just kind of goofing around, but this is definitely a quick a quick starter for you to start making your own uh, entities. And so you can see here these cubes on this 
uh, on the llama, you've got the body made up of multiple different cubes. So let's go ahead and just make sure, I just want to make sure I have the uh, coding properly. It didn't shift to an array or anything like that. Okay, so we've got this. We're just going to make a copy of this guy. Copy. We're going to put a comma here. Go here and we're going to paste. Okay, so now we have two bones in the gaft. And so the origin on this guy is going to be um, instead of minus four, we'll make it four. And the, uh, instead of minus four, let's make it minus two. And then we'll make it um, one by uh, six by one. Hope I'm doing this right. I hope you are paying attention. And now remember our gradient was kind of over on the left-hand side. Let's move this to like um, 20. Get it away from the blue so it's just a white point. Hopefully that's enough. Um, 30. Okay, so it's going to pick up from um, 30, which is right here, uh, which is right here. And that's clearly white in that area, so the horn should be white. Oh boy, I hope this is going to um, go in there. I have to save and quit. I forgot to exit the world. I'm not sure what kind of save happens when you do that, but one of the things I like to do just to make sure is if that happens, if you're not out of the world and you're changing your world, you can go ahead and just do a save again so that it's definitely overwriting that file. Check out the test here. Oh boy, it killed him. Just killed him dead. Where'd you go? Donk. Donk. Bonk. Oh, <laughs> we totally messed that up. All right, looks like we got some uh, some of our coordinates wrong. So that that's something interesting to uh, take a look at. <laughs> so it's set back properly. It just it's just not vertically uh, the right way, and it's also not centered side to side. Let's see what we did. Let's just exit out. Thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you have to head out, it's good seeing you here. And we'll keep you posted on future updates. And I'm going to go ahead and troubleshoot this bad boy here. So, uh, origin of four on the X. Six here. Oh, there's the Y. That's, that's obvious right there. So, that should be four. All right. What did we do? We did minus two there, and of course, that's sh this should be more like zero. So that zero is center. Remember, because so that center uh, center is zero, and then up high on the top of the head, and then sit back from the front of the head. So let's hope that works. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. See, it is a little complicated, but. Uh, it's a quick way to test, see what you did wrong, and then go ahead and tweak it further. So that's kind of a little bit of a unicorn going on there. I think we're going to punch that up a little bit higher. All right. And then, uh, let's go ahead and make the size of this guy. Two. There, right? Like we did with the tail. And then change that to uh, 10. Yeah. Right, so 10 kind of pushed it up a little too far. But you get the idea. There's our little horn. Could drop that down a few blocks. We've got our crazy custom creature, which is essentially a gas. And uh, I could show you 
be good ending here. The face still changes back to the other skin that we didn't tweak. Hey, I'm over here, buddy. I'm over here. I'm over. Oh, what did I do? I must have typed something wrong. Oh, gosh. See, he's, uh, makes the face, it changes to a different skin. It doesn't look like the same because he's a different size now. Okay. Well, there you go. There's our crazy custom entity. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, check out my website, www.cleverlike.com, and keep me posted if you guys have any uh, ideas or need any help with anything in the future. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.